Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and I'll break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, it's all about Coinbase and the XRP Spark airdrop and what's going on behind it. We're going to take a look at why XRP holders are going to receive more Spark airdrop, all the different exchanges and wallets that are supporting this, as well as messages from Celsius and from the CEO of Voyager himself. On top of that, I want to take a look at what's going on with Coinbase and why I believe they are actually crumbling in the background, everything from outages to discrimination, and finally the big one, market competition. That's why I believe Coinbase is falling way behind and they are just playing catch up. Also, Christmas is coming up and you got people around you who like coffee and they're trying to be smart. Why don't you try Smart Coffee? It is the world's first nootropic instant coffee. Links in the description and I'll talk about all this at the end of today's video. And we'll go over all that first, take a look what's on in the market very quickly. It is November 29th, it is high noon, and what do we have today? Well, it is Sunday, so I always expect big drops, but uh, no, I guess the big drop already happened uh, earlier in the week. So we got Bitcoin up by 2% and it broke through the $18,000 resistance range. So we are right now sitting just above 18. Now, this could change by the time I put this video out, but that is positive news because there was a lot of different proponents and pundits out there talking about how Bitcoin would drop to potentially 14, 12, and I've earned even $10,000. So for all the people who had strong hands, they go, you know what? I don't care, I'm, I'm picking it up. Congratulations to you. You are the winner today. So 18K for Bitcoin, not too bad. Ethereum. 550 at 1.8. Hey, I like those numbers. XRP is down a little bit. That's kind of odd. Seven days for 30%. XRP, and this is what we're all talking about today, about uh, XRP and the Spark airdrop. So you would think that there would be more people buying into XRP to get the airdrop, but apparently that's not the case. But 30% for the day, uh, for the seven day, but down 4.5%. But it is Sunday, so what are you going to do? Tether is, uh, keeps printing at their treasury. I'd like to see an audit on that, but whatever. Uh, it looks like it's at uh, 19 billion. Bitcoin Cash firmly in the uh, fifth spot. Well, not firmly, I can't say that because market cap is uh, 5.18 billion. Chainlink is right at its heels at 5.178 billion. So that'll be flipping around uh, throughout the whole week. Then we've got Litecoin Cardano up 22% for the uh, seven day, down a little bit, but uh, I am. I'm looking at Cardano. I'm really going to be uh, delving into that uh, that project a lot more coming up, and uh, I'll tell you all about it. So then going down, Polkadot, 3.7 up, 1.5. Anything fantastic? No, not really. Let's take a look at what this looks like, uh, not in USD, but how about in Bitcoin? So, of course, we're looking at Bitcoin. It's all zeros across the board for Bitcoin. Uh, but how does that in relation uh, as far as Ethereum? Well, Ethereum down a half to the top crypto. 3.9 for seven day XRP, roughly about the same thing. I mean, it really isn't. I like to take a look at this because I like a, a different view as opposed to the dollar because it kind of just gives me like a better uh, judgment of what is happening with the overall crypto market. Down 2.8 for Chainlink, 12%. Litecoin up uh, 26, so roughly the same. Not too much uh, really action going on here. 7.8 for NEM, 1.8. All right, so what you're looking at here is in relation to how these altcoins are doing as compared to Bitcoin, not in dollars, but uh, just as it compares to the king, the king uh, crypto. And uh, I know people say, ah, it's old, but I mean, it is what it is. So this is how you're doing if you would have, uh, you know, gone against, not put your money into Bitcoin. I mean, like Litecoin, you'd be up. What else? Polkadot, a little bit. And um, really, that's it. Waves, uh, Zillica, Ampleforth. Nexo 12.8. So you can see that um, when people talk about Bitcoin as being the main one, well, there's a reason. So I don't understand the comment section, but uh, let's go to today's top stories. This is big for a lot of reasons. And when we talk about this, it's all about Coinbase just kind of just going, you know what? We're going to do what Coinbase wants to do, not what you guys want to do, what we want to do. And I think that is one of the big downfalls of companies is that they don't really listen to their customers. The companies that do that really you know, pay attention to like what their customers want. Take a look at Amazon. Anything that the customer wants, essentially they get. I mean, that's just how it is. But when you take a look at businesses that, that don't listen and pay attention, there's the ones that just, just falter and fall. So here's what's going on. Coinbase is reluctant to support the Flares Spark airdrop despite holding a massive amount of XRP. So what's happening here? Coinbase, Winning exchange in U.S. can't catch a break. <laughs> That's the truth. It riled up the XRP army after refusing to participate in the upcoming airdrop of Flare Network's Spark token. So they didn't come out and just say, hey, we're not going to do it. Tough luck. 
really what it is is Flair going, hey, this the, we've reached out. They haven't reached out to us. It's coming up on December, so they're not going to do it. It's just too late. And this is actually coming from the actual tweet from Flair Network. And they state, uh, Coinbase has barely engaged with Flair. They hold about $3 billion of your XRP. Yeah, $3 billion. Did I say $3 million? $3 billion, excuse me. It's likely too late for them to do the work to support the Spark distribution at this point. And then uh, Santiago says, hey, uh, because they've got that all locked up, they're not going to do anything, are you going to um, redistribute those unused Spark tokens to the remainder in the same way as exclusion? Meaning, since that is all locked up, which Spark should go to those holders, and it's supposed to be one-to-one -one for all XRP holders, what are you going to do? And uh, he asked, can you just give us the rest? Because those people aren't, you know, really including uh, themselves in the community. Because if they did, they would know about this. And Flair said, you know what? We're not going to consider it. Uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be what actually happens. So what they're saying is that, yes, they're going to redistribute the 3 billion Spark tokens that were supposed to go to the people who hold XRP in Coinbase and going to redistribute to everybody who has it in the correct wallets. What are the correct wallets and exchanges? Well, let me show you. This is from Stetis. If you don't know Stetis, he's like huge in the XRP community and he does a lot of these, these uh, great little uh, graphics. So here's the 20 exchanges that we know about so far. You got Uphold, Bit, I always say BitThumb, but somebody said BitHum, whatever. BitTrue, ZB, Binance, eToro, Bitstamp, Index, Crypto.com, Bitso, Tokens, Coinfield, BitPay, UpBit, GoPax, ProBit, CoinSpot, huh? KuCoin, VKEX, WazirX, I think that's the one from India, BitCub, and Corbit. Here's the 10 wallets Zoom, Ledger, Guardia, Kobo, Exodus, and then for support, MetaMask, GateHub, SafePal, and Descent. So those are the ones that he has on there. I think this is old. I'm going to tell you why. Because this was a video that was just put out by Celsius, and this is uh, the Celsius chief technical officer. His name is Nuke. I think his name is Nuke. Man, what a great name, Nuke. So Nuke coming here and says, hey, uh, yeah, we will definitely be supporting this airdrop. And he just lays it out. It's like two minutes, a link in the description. You can watch it yourself. But he just says, you don't have to do anything. There's nothing to do. Just make sure you don't screw up and uh, move your XRP around. Just leave it in there and everything will be okay. He also addresses uh, about the redistribution by Spark. He says, if you're going to get one more than one, we're going to handle that. So don't worry about it. Just leave it in there. Don't do anything. And uh, that's it. He says it's going to happen on December 12th, I think, I believe is the date. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section, but I'm pretty sure. And he gives, gives a great advice. He says, don't transfer on December 12th because it happens, you know, at 12.01 a.m. Do it a day or two days before. I mean, really, honestly, you should have all your XRP where you want it to be right now. And uh, that's all you got to do. So just do it like that. And then I also heard rumblings that Voyager was going to do it, but I couldn't get any confirmation. And our last interview with uh, the CEO, Steve Ehrlich, this is on October 19th. He said, hey, man, we're really trying hard, we're really, you know, getting things done. And I was like, all right. And I, I like Steve. I believe Steve. And he actually said that they're working on uh, allowing more uh, cryptocurrency tokens and coins to be taken off the platform. And they actually did uh, come true with that because they just allowed uh, Cardano to be taken off the network, which is huge. I really appreciate that. So he said he's working on it, and then I didn't see anything on the website. It's a uh, pretty inclusive search, and I couldn't find anything. So I just reached out to him on Twitter. I sent him a direct message. I go, "Hey man, I know you're just uh, you're waiting for your jets to get pummeled by the. I, it says spam, but I try to say spanked, <laughs> spanked by the Bengals today. But I'm doing a video on all things XRP Spark airdrop. I saw some of you guys are going to support it." Was that already announced because I can't find anything? He said, yeah, we said on Twitter, but it's not in a formal release. But yes, we are. <laughs> Go Giants. I said, yeah, well, good luck with that. So you heard it right here. This is Steve Ehrlich. He's a CEO of uh, Voyager. He's saying, yes, we're going to support it. So just leave your XRP in that wallet just like you would with Celsius because they're going to support it. And, I, and then uh, it's going to be the same type of thing. If you get more than one, that's fine. They'll give you more than one. Uh, so that's the big thing. And this is uh, a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. But on the flip side, let's talk about who's not going to support it. Coinbase isn't going to support it. Also, Kraken just came out and said, look, we don't have any plan to support this airdrop of fork. You could consider withdrawing your coins to the wallet you control. Kraken is not obligated to credit airdrops that occurred in the past or that will occur in the future. They're just like, we don't care. Take your stuff off here. We don't want your junk. That's pretty much what it says to me. I mean, I could be wrong. And let me know in the comment section. Everybody's got their own opinion about it. But to me, if a lot of people 
you have the third largest cryptocurrency, I mean, out there. So why wouldn't you support an airdrop that does it? I know it's a lot of work, but guess what? You're not the only game in town. So just saying. So Kraken's Kraken. I mean, they got their own things going on with their special depository unit, trying to get a banking license or whatever else. So sure, whatever. I'm not going to give them a pass on that, but I'm just saying it is kind of odd. But this comes up to my next point, which is taking a look at Coinbase and what the hell's going on over there. Because, I mean, first of all, they didn't even engage with anybody. They didn't even put out anything out. They're just like, mom's the word, and uh, you guys figure it out. So sorry. We know you want it, but tough titty. <laughs> <laughs>